Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to look at a radio called the Redivus RT85. This is a new radio. It's out on the market. It's a very simple, very plain um, FM only dual band on 2 meters and 70 centimeters, and it's an FM radio. Uh, I just want to go over some of the features and I also have a check set up over here where we can look at spectral purity and see if the thing is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Okay, so let's dig in. This is what came. This is the Redivus right here, two-way radio. It comes with, uh, these are warnings, in other words, uh, things not to do. If you've got a uh, microscope, you can read that. Uh, this is the user's manual that is in uh, five languages, English, French, uh, German, Italian, and Spanish, of all things. So uh, this could be a North American uh, distribution. I know they like to make things the same for all the world, but this is an American uh, distribution here. Here is the radio itself. It's got a little uh, thing you can pull off here so that you can get your, uh, you know, see the screen a little bit better. And uh, here's your uh, thingy that goes in here so you've got something to hold on. By the way, I do recommend putting these on. And you put this around your hand while you're using the radio and then there's a lot less chance that you'll drop it if you're riding in a balloon or something that's important. Okay, here's the battery. The battery comes only partially charged. To put this battery on, you have to put this over the hooks on the bottom, which means this thing's going to have to be pushed down. And then it will go on. And you heard that little snap. Here's the antenna that just comes with the one antenna, not a very big one. And now note that this is the male on the antenna and the female on uh, the radio. So uh, we're careful to put that on there without bending that center pin. Now we have a plug-in charger. There's no uh, 12 volt charger. It's only a plug-in type of a charger. And here's a little belt clip for you. Now, um, as it turns out, they sent me two of them, so the other one's already set up for testing. Now, let me tell you a little bit about uh, the radio itself. Um, it's 2 meter 70 centimeter, and as far as I can tell, you cannot make it transmit out of the ham bands. So this right here, I would rather, instead of analog two-way radio, see analog two-way ham radio or amateur radio or license required or something like that. Okay, there is a little flashlight uh, on the thing here. Let's turn it on. There is a little flashlight that's useful. I really think it's a good idea to put the flashlight on the radio because if you're in the dark, uh, flashlight's something you want to have. This is the money button. This will cancel the squelch so you can hear anything in the background. This is the push to talk. Now it comes in um, uh, here. There, there is not a frequency knob at the top. So you have to go through the channels uh, by pushing this and uh, you can also go to a channel by pushing um, here. One, two. Let's see, that puts it at one, two, nine. The 13. Oh, well. Uh, so you can play with that and get that uh, used to a little bit. It has all the features that you would expect uh, in a simple FM radio. Uh, dual band, dual display, dual standby. Now, dual standby actually means it doesn't listen to two frequencies simultaneously. It's constantly switching back and forth between them. And then it will stick on one. 
so you can have uh, two frequencies in there you want on dual standby dot matrix LCD pretty basic a B band independent operation so a B a B changes not between two meters and 70 centimeters but rather the top VFO or the bottom VFO there's up to 200 channels for storage and scanning that's a lot for most people now note that since there's no uh, button up here there's no bank concept where you can uh, go to a bank and get a few it will do FM radio this is broadcast radio 24 station memory for you uh, that you can put your broadcast band frequencies in here wide middle narrow band selectable select narrow for ham radio I'm sorry scratch that take that little part out wide middle narrow band selectable choose for ham radio wide band okay unless your repeater owner owner tells you otherwise it has a Vox a voice operated relay I don't recommend using that you can put CTCSS tones in here which are useful in the United States the DCS is not used in uh, the US it has scanning you can scan between the bands you can also set a particular channel so that it gets skipped by the scanning the 1750 Hertz tone is useful in Europe shortcut menu operation mode for the first 10 menu items you put it punch uh, function and then the number between um, 1 and 9 for those an emergency alert it makes some sort of a, a noise it does do DTMF okay D, that's dual tone multi-frequency or um, what is often called touch tone if you're using an auto patch for example there are very few auto patches left not even worth looking at remote stun kill activate is a I don't know it's sort of a leftover from DMR uh, we don't use that in the United States we don't use any we don't use scrambler scrambler actually is illegal in the US although it is legal in Canada the 25 tone is for uh, the same kind of thing up here a DCS uh, which allows you to get some privacy on your channel uh, the CTCSS is what we use in the US multi types for key lock setting and a multi display mode okay so there are not that many pages in the um, American manual let's see this is French so here we are just these few pages for the American and it tells you how to do things from the menu and it also shows using chirp or something like that to program this thing as it turns out chirp has a new modification uh, that you can use to program this so I'm going to show you uh, the programming first of all um, there is no programming cable included so you're going to have to get a separate programming cable you may have it from another radio uh, the programming cable that I use is the so-called red cable from uh, well Oshang um, it says it supports win 10 this cable comes from PowerWorks okay it's 17 or 18 dollars it's the standard uh, Kenwood style cable okay so if you have a programming cable that has those on the ends it may well work for you I know that this one works this does not have the um, you think you're for a minute off offline of course um, it does not have the prolific chip in it it has a silicon labs chip in it there is and always has been a problem with the prolific chip because uh, the earlier prolific chips 
were counterfeited widely. And so Prolific has worked with uh, computer makers to block uh, those old uh, drivers for that and Prolific has abandoned that old chip style. The newer Prolific work fine. Okay, so you plug this into a USB port. Okay, then you come down over here to the start button, uh, right click on it and go to device manager. Okay, and it comes up with all the devices. Go to ports, com, and LPD. Uh, communications port one happens to be used to talk to my ICOM. Uh, this is Silicon Labs. Uh, this is the one that we're looking at, the Silicon Labs. That's this red one. And it's COM4. All we need to know is that it is COM4. So let's put this in here. Now note it goes upside down and push it all the way in. The radio has to be on, not just on, but on a little bit because this uses audio tones over the cable. Okay, and um, let me start with um, a new file here. We go to radio, download from radio. This is Chirp. Chirp comes from chirp.danplanet.com. Let, let's just do that. Let's just go there before we get into it. Okay. Um, chirp. Oops. Chirp at danplanet.com. Okay. And this is the programming software that's used by all these radios. A lot of the uh, Chinese radios are saying just use Chirp because it's free. Now, if we go into uh, Redivis, we find that the RT85 is listed there. Okay, so you can download Chirp easily enough by just clicking on Get It. You can donate if you want to, um, but. Um, you click here to do download the latest Windows version. And then it highlights Chirp Daily. Note that it's 2022 01, January 15th. Well, it turns out that was two days ago. So that's an updated installer. I have already installed it, so let's just go to it. And this is Chirp. We set for COM4. Remember, that's the right one. Vendor Redifice. RT85 and then OK. And it will bring down, this is downloading from the radio, and there we go. Um, Redivis 85, there we go. You can have multiple radios up here. Let's just um, get rid of these bad ones. OK. Here it is, uh, we can save it. I modified this a little bit. You've got the location is the channel, and the channel goes up to 200. Zero, one to, well, 199, okay. That's pretty close. Now, um, you put the frequency, this is the received frequency. You can name the channel, like I named this one APRS. Now, it comes loaded with a bunch of uh, 2 meter and 70 centimeter channels to show you different ways you can put in tone squelches and stuff like that. Uh, note the wideband FM uh, widely used in um, ham radio. I made that narrow band. So if I come over here, right click and go to properties, I have over here this one where I can make this wideband FM, which is what we want for ham radio, okay? Now I put this frequency right here because it's out of band. I wanted to see if it would transmit out of band. I didn't give it a name. Now the tone, there's nothing in here to indicate uh, whether the tone is used, okay? So it's not used. So it doesn't matter what you put in here, tone squelch or DTC, DTC squelch. 
um, or the codes or anything over here if the tone column is blank. You can do cross mode here. Uh, duplex is for a repeater. You, and the offset goes in here. The mode for FM, uh, low high power, and uh, skip. Now what the skip does, if we pick one here and just check the properties, uh, the skip down here, you can either do nothing or a skip. If you put the skip in there, that means when you scan, you'll skip that channel. The reason you might want to do that is if, for example, you've got a weather station or something like that uh, put in there. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've done right now. We'll just go ahead and upload it to the radio. Upload to radio. COM4. Okay. And it is an early beta driver, but it does work. Now, before we leave this page, I want to mention there is another page with all different kinds of settings. You can set just about anything on here. Okay. So, just for kicks, let's see if it'll do this. I'm going to put in KE0OG right there. Okay. Come back up here, radio, upload to radio, upload, okay. It's cloning up to the radio. All right, now let's just, now that it's done, this is done. And with Chirp, of course, you can save. This is done here. We'll take that out, turn this off, and turn it on. And it's got my call sign on there. KE0OG, and then it goes to uh, these. Now, let's go. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Ooh, I put 141 in there, but it wouldn't put a 141 into the radio. It put 144. Let's see if that's true. This right here is a spectrum analyzer. And we're going to transmit on a 2 meter frequency into this loop here. And this is 140, 141, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. So the actual band is from 144 to 5, 6, 7, 8. That's the ham band right there. So let's uh, go ahead and... Uh, press this and we see that it comes in right on 144 even though we tried to put in a 145 it wouldn't let us okay and we can tune up the band oops let's just eight. go to eight this should be 145 and 145 637 right there in the middle is 145 and it's about six tenths a little way over. Okay, so it appears to be nicely accurate. Now, if we change this here and go back to um, see the start frequency of zero um, hertz. Okay, this starts now at zero hertz and goes up to 1.5 gigahertz. Okay, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten graduations in here. So each graduation is 150 megahertz. So let's see what this does on uh, two meters. It's got a nice signal right there just below 150 megahertz, 140. Okay. Now there are no out of band things popping up in here. Let's switch this over to a uh, 70 centimeter and we note here that's 1.53 450 just under 450 this is 434 coming up there and that's right and notice we aren't getting any crud over here from poor uh, output. So let's go back here and just do a little review. Um, just by going through the battery, 
does not come attached you have to put it in um, and then there's a little belt clip which I never use and you note that the cable goes in this way however this thing comes with the body the antenna the battery the charger the belt clip and these other things are somewhat optional although you've got the charger but a charger that can work from 12 volts you can also get a bigger battery this is a 1.4 amp hour battery or a different type of adapter okay does not come with programming cable so uh, I would recommend that you get that because it's so much easier to program with that it will work in either channel mode or direct entry mode um, it actually and this is something I've seen left out of manuals it shows what the items on the screen mean okay um, okay and the set menu mode all the different things you can set it is possible to set the channel in here using just the front panel but it's not easy these are the classic US CTCSS tone frequencies a lot of repeaters need a tone entry it's often either 100 Hertz or 107.2 Hertz but it could be any one of these now what that will do is it will stop random noise bursts from opening the repeater and so the CTSS uh, is for that on receive you can use it so that you only receive from certain people if you're doing simplex the DCS codes are not used in the United States now the uh, software here is actually the Redivus software which you can download if you want I would recommend chirp it's just so much easier okay some of the technical specifications 200 channels that's an awful lot without being able to put them in different banks uh, 7.4 DC as is true for all Chinese radios operating temperature don't let it get too cold uh, the weight dimensions frequencies now it says 136 to 174 400 to 480 but it doesn't do that it only works on the ham frequencies it will ignore any other frequency entry power 5 watts well there's actually low medium and high power on this thing okay um, and these are just um, uh, let's see receiver okay the transmitter and receiver are two different things you might be able to put like a weather station in the repeater and that's the end of the instruction book it goes into French from there so what do we have uh, in terms of this radio let's take a look at the price on Amazon <clears throat> okay, Redivus. Okay, there are lots of ways you can buy this. Um, RT85. Okay, here's the single RT85 right here. All right, at, at $34.99. So it is an inexpensive radio, but you are getting a radio that has reasonably pure output and is not stepping on um, all sorts of other services okay and it tells you different things it can do again I do like that flashlight now you can buy them in different ways um, let's go back to the Redivus 85 page here and Redivus 85 here buy a pair of them Redivus 85 you can get four of them for 129 this is something that you might look at for a club purchase now note what it says rescue construction warehouse the redivus 85 as far as i can tell will not transmit outside the ham band so this is what i would say misleading it should say ham radio okay um they've got all kinds of handouts all right here so here's the 85 different packages that you can get
When I was corresponding with the gal from China who asked me if I would like to get a couple of these and test them, um, I said, yeah, sure, but only if they only operate in the handbands. She assured me that was the case, although that's different from what it says on Amazon. But I would encourage you, uh, since they have shown and we have seen here, it only works on the handband. This might be a good little um, extra handheld. Uh, it doesn't have any fancy features. It's FM only. It doesn't do any digital. Uh, it has three power levels, which I have yet to find, but they're usually 1, 5, and 10 watts. So I would recommend against using the 10 watt. I would recommend against holding the thing up to your head right here because uh, this is capable of being fried up there. And then the whole point is you want to keep the two meter away from you. What a lot of police and firemen do is they'll grab the radio this way by the side and transmit down here. Okay, that way the transmitter is away from the parts of the head that have a chance of having problems uh, with uh, RF. In any case, uh, there is no record that I know of of any ham having um, radio frequency induced medical problems. So, um, of course, if you have a pacemaker, check your uh, doctor's recommendation on power and frequency levels uh, that you can use. Note that since it has a reversible or a removable antenna, you can actually connect an adapter to this and then you can connect that to coax and use a, like a J-pole or something on the roof and vastly extend the range of the antenna. That's usually the first thing people do with something like that. So there you have it, a nice, simple radio. It's a very nice little radio that is, um, uh, doesn't cost very much money, so its shortcomings don't really matter very much. If it breaks, just throw it away. So there you go, there you have it. And until next time, 73.